Hello, this is Mr. Stainsbury. I'm going to take you through the 6K index laws notes. At the end of this, you should be able to apply all the index or the power laws with both constants and variables. And there's a lot of index and power laws. So um, we're going to, it'll take us a little while, but we'll, we'll get through it and they should make good sense. So let's take a look at what all the um, laws are. Okay. So I'm going to show you not just what the power laws are, but how they work. So then when we get to trying a bunch of examples, then we'll be good to go. All right. So first thing, if you have x to the fourth times x to the third, that's really the same thing as one, two, three, four. There's my x to the fourth. And then one, two, three, x to the thirds. So that's really x to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what we're really doing is taking x to the seventh is our answer. So really the easy way, hopefully, that you can figure out that is to just add the exponent. So that's x to the four plus three, which is x to the seventh. Okay? So the general way to write that is, and this is how the, the, all of these are on page 192 from your book. So the nice way to write that is, they've got it as a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. Okay, and those again are not nines, those are a's. All right, so that's the first one. Second one, x to the fifth divided by x to the third. So again, another way to write that is one, two, three, four, five. There's my x to the fifth, there's my x to the third, and those will cancel, those will cancel, and these will cancel, and you're just left with those when we're done. So we get equals x squared, right? So the easier way to write that, or the easy way to calculate this, hopefully, you would figure out you would go x to the fifth, and you're going to subtract instead of add the exponents, you're going to subtract them if they're over the top of each other. 5 minus 3 which is x squared, right? So the general form way to write that is a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n, okay? So these formulas here, um, you may get worried, just like, oh my gosh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. Yes, but once you use these a couple of times, you won't even have to worry about these formulas here. You'll just start remembering how to do all these, and so you don't need to get stressed out about having seven different formulas all figured out, okay? Because it's gonna, should just start coming naturally as we go. Okay, so x squared to the third power. A way that we can rewrite that is what we truly have here is x squared three times, right? So it's x squared times x squared times x squared, okay? From back up here, when we are when we have a power with the same bases and we have the exponents up here, we're going to add those exponents. So that's really x to the 2 plus 2 plus 2 is x to the 6th, right? Okay. Now the easier, hopefully the easier way to do that is to say, oh wait, I've got three sets of two. So to do that quickly, it's going to be x to the two times three. So we just multiply those exponents, which is x to the sixth. Okay? And the way we write that is a to the m power raised to the n power is a to the m times n. Okay? Let's take a look at the next one, x, y to the third. Again, you can write as x, y times x, y times x, y. And if there's no number, no power written out there, it is assumed, and it's always correct, it's 
always 1. So really that's x to the first, y to the first, x to the first, y to the first, x to the first, y to the first. So really we have x to the 1, 2, 3, add those all up, x cubed and y cubed. Right? So really, <clears throat> all you're doing is taking, sorry, oops, x to the third. All you're doing is basically just multiplying these exponents together, just like what we did here, but you just have two of them now. Okay? So the way we would write that is, <clears throat> excuse me, a, b to the n equals a to the n times b to the n. Right, you just distribute that power through to both of those. All right, let's take a look at this one here. X to the fourth, x, y, all over the, all to the fourth. X over y, four times. X over y, x over y, and x over y. So again, if you think about that, it's just one, two, three, four x's on the top. X to the fourth over y to the fourth, right? So again, you just take this four and distribute it to both the top and the bottom, okay? So we would write that as, um, if we had a over b, all to the nth power, it's the same thing as a to the nth over b to the nth power. Three to the negative second. This is uh, one that we hit right at the end of the last set of notes. And what you want to do with this here, three to the negative second, is the same thing as you want to just take this negative exponent and move it to the bottom. So it's one over three squared. Okay? And that's really all you need to do with that. You could write it as 1 over 9 if you really wanted to, but either way is fine. So that power law is written like this. We have a to the negative n equals 1 over a to the n. Okay? And then last one here, we have 7 to the 0. And pretty much anything to the 0 power just equals one okay so that's that's the nice part here as long as this base doesn't equal zero then it's going to equal one okay so we would write that as a to the zero equals one and again they did put a little stipulation a cannot equal zero okay so these are all the power laws and here's how they all work. Okay? Let's take a look at some examples and we've got a just to be completely fair with you, we've got a lot, we've got a fair amount of examples through here and I elected to go through every set of examples just to make sure that you've got this all down. So um, again feel free to write down the ones that you feel like you're gonna need to have all written down. Alright? So we're going to move fairly quickly through this, otherwise it's really going to drag on. So this is our first power law that we that we did. So using this power law, a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. Feel free on all of these. Once you see these, say, hey, wait, I can do that. Do it on your own first, and then push pause. Do it on your own, and then play the video back and make sure that you got the same answers that we did. And if you didn't, then obviously just check and see what uh, you know what went wrong, and then and then adjust on that. So this really is saying 11 to the 5 plus 3 which gives us 11 to the 8th. Alright? <clears throat> Add the exponents here. a to the 4 plus 5 gives us a to the 9th. <coughs> Excuse me. And then x to the 4 plus a. That's not a 9, that's an a. And you can't simplify that at all so you just leave it like that. Okay, so that's our first set of examples. On to the next set. Example 32 from page 193. Simplify using m over n. So you subtract these. Right? 
And again, you can only do this as long as the bases are the same. So notice the 7s are the same, the Bs are the same, so you can, you can do the subtraction. 7 to the 8 minus 5 gives us 7 to the 3rd. Okay. B to the 6 minus M. Again, you can't take 6 minus M and simplify that, so you just leave it as B to the 6 minus M. All right? Okay, next set of examples. Hey, example 33 from page 193. Okay. Now we're going to multiply these exponents. When you have a, it's called power raised to a power. So when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponent. So this is 2 to the 4 times 3, which is 2 to the 12th. x to the 3 times 5, which is x to the 15th. And this is b to the 7 times m. And again, you can't really simplify that. It might look a little nicer to just write b to the 7m without the little multiplication sign in between. All right? OK. Next set of examples. <clears throat> Example 34 from page 193. Express in simplest form with a prime number base. So this is a little different here. This isn't dealing directly with our formulas, but we have to do something first. So a prime number base. Nine's not a prime number, it's a perfect square. So what they're asking us to do here is turn nine into something that you can multiply together to get nine. So nine is the same thing as nine is the same thing as three squared, right? So I'm gonna replace that nine with three squared. So really what they're saying this is three squared to the fourth, All right? And then now we're back to the power to a power rule. So we go three to the two times four is three to the eighth. So nine to the fourth is the same thing as three to the eighth. And you can always, if you're like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. You can always double check these, especially if they give you, well, you can only double check them if you've got actual values in there. So let's do this, nine to the fourth gives us 65, 61. Let's see what 3, oops, not 33, but 3 to the 8 gives us 65, 61. So these 9 to the 4th is the same thing as 3 to the 8th. All right. So next one, 4 times 2 to the p power. <clears throat> 4 can be written as 2 squared. So we're going to do this, 2 squared times 2 to the p. So this is just going to be 2 to the 2p, because you multiply 2 times p to get 2p. All right? c, 3 to the x over 9 to the y. We know that 9 is 3 squared. So we're going to turn this into 3 to the x over 3 squared to the y. OK? Now. On the bottom, let's see, we have 3 to the x on the top. And on the bottom, it's 3 to the 2y, right? And simplest form means to get these 3s, we have the same bases, get them together. So since we have one over the top of the other, we have a fraction. You subtract these. And again, the way that I remember that is you take this, I see this fraction as a big negative sign. So this is really 3 to the x. And there's my big negative sign, minus. 2y. And again, you can't simplify that, so that is our answer. Okay? So again, think of that as a big subtraction sign. And then this one here, 25 to the x minus 1. 25 is just 5 squared. So that's 5 squared to the x minus 1. Okay? So really, you're just you're going to take this 2 and you're going to distribute it through to both of those. So this is going to be 5 to the 2x, and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So that's 5 to the 2x minus 2 on that one. All right? OK. Next set of examples. Example 35 from page 194. Remove the brackets of this. So basically, it means distribute that 3 through and distribute the 4 through. I find it 
handy to, and it helps me to not make nearly as many errors if whenever I see um, numbers and variables in here without powers, I'm always going to put a 1 next to them just so that I don't forget. So now I know that I go 3 times 1 and 3 times 1 there, so that's 2 to the 3rd, x to the 3rd. And that's all you can do. Okay, same thing here, 3 to the 1st, c to the 1st, b to the 1st. So this is going to be 3 to the 4th, because again we're going to multiply 4 by that, by that, and by that, all these powers of 1. Okay, so that's 3 to the 4th, c to the 4th, over b to the 4th. So you could write that, you could write it like this, or you could move that b to the 4th back up to the top, and write that as 3 to the 4th, c to the 4th, b to the, since we moved it from the bottom back to the top, it would be b to the negative 4th. You could do either or. They didn't specify that you need to write it without fractions or whatever, so you can do either one of these is fine. Um, eventually they might ask you to write this without, write your answers without fractions, or sometimes they might ask you to write your answers without negative exponents, and in this case you'd have to write it like this. Okay? Alright. Next set of examples. Um, example 36 from page 194. Um, again, similar to what we just did here, except for some of these now actually have some other powers in there. So again, I'm going to write one with that one, a one with this one, and then distribute my four, power of four to all of those. So that's three to the fourth, a to the twelfth, b to the fourth. And you can just leave it like that. If you want to calculate out what three to the fourth is, you can write it down if you want to, but this is, this is just fine. Okay. There's my x squared, and I know that's 2 to the first and y to the first down there. Multiply all these exponents by 3, so that's x to the sixth over 2 cubed y cubed. Okay, which again is just fine. You could move those exponents up and turn them to negatives if you want, but again, it doesn't specify, so you can just leave it. Okay? All right. We're doing great. We're getting close. So, next set of examples. Example 37 from page 195. Simplify using the index laws. So this one here, th these here often will start messing people up. Okay? What you want to do is you want to separate the constants from the, ex from the uh, variables with powers. Okay? So, Really what we want to do is, I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 5 times x squared times x to the fifth. Okay, so I'm going to put my constants together and I'm going to put my variables together. So the 3 times 5 is going to give me 15. And then 2, since we're not taking a power to the power, we're mul just multiplying these here. x squared times x to the fifth, we add those, so that's going to be x to the 2 plus 5, or just 15x to the 7th would be our answer for that. Okay. Same thing over here. Um, I just want to think of these as two separate little problems. 20 divided by 4 gives me 5, and then a to the 9 minus, again this is a big subtraction sign, 9 minus 6. So this is going to be 5a cubed. Okay, so again, take care of the constants together and then take care of the variables together. But they don't follow the same, the same rules because these you subtract and these you actually divide, right? Okay, a little confusing, but again, the more you practice it, the more it starts to make sense. Okay, this one here. I'm going to simplify the numerator and then simplify the denominator and then simplify them all together. So that's going to be b to the 3 plus 7 all over b to the 2 times 4 because that's a power raised to a power. So this is b to the, let's do this, let's do a little squiggly so we know where our different steps are. So this is, in fact, let's even do it in different color, make it even easier to see. 
Oops, I shouldn't cross it out. That doesn't help. So there's one. And then now we do this. 3 plus 7 gives us b to the 10th over 2 times 4 is b to the 8th. Right? So now we're going to do b to the 10 minus 8, which gives us b squared. So this big mess up here ends up just being the same as b squared. All right? Okay, we're getting somewhere. Only a few set of examples left. All right. So this one's example 38 from page 195. Simplify giving answers in simplest rational form. All right, so remember, anything to the zero power, one. And we are done with that problem, okay? Except for, again, the only case that that doesn't work is if it's zero to the zero power, okay? 3 to the negative second. Basically, the only thing we can do with that is turn that into 1 over 3 to the second, right? So remember, whenever you get a negative exponent, move it to the bottom, okay? Or we can rewrite this as 1 ninth. That looks a little bit nicer, okay? But again, I think that would be probably just fine. This just is a little bit better. All right, 3 to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1 minus, and then 3 to the negative first is 1 over 3 to the first. So that's 1 minus a third, right? Because we don't really even need that to the first power. So let's just get rid of that. 1 minus a third is really what they're talking about. We want to get the same denominators here to subtract fractions. So that's 3 thirds minus 1 third, right? Because 1 is the same as 3 thirds. So 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And then this one here, 5 thirds to the negative second. A couple different ways to do this. Probably the easiest is just to distribute that negative 2 to both of those. So we get 5 to the 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 over 3 to the 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And then since this is a negative exponent, move that one down. And since this is a negative exponent, you move this one up. So it just turns into put our little separating line so we know what we've gone to the next step. So that 5 to the negative second comes down, turns into 5 squared, and the 3 to the negative second comes up, so that turns into 3 squared. Okay. Again, this would be just fine, or again, you could write that as 9 over 25. A lot of people like the way that that looks better, so that would probably be your better answer, but for what we're doing, that would be, that would suffice. Okay, three sets of examples left. We're almost there. Oh, wait. Did I lie? So three, there are, yes, three sets of example, examples left. Example 39, page 196. Write the following without brackets or negative exponents. So you got to write all these with positive exponents. So that's 5 to the first, x to the first. So really that's 5 to the negative, oops, I can't read that. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So that's 5 to the negative first, x to the negative first, without negative exponents. So we've got to turn that into 1 over 5 times 1 over x. Or the nicest way to write that is just 1 over 5 x. Okay, a simpler way to do that would really just be to have gone, you can really go straight from this step to that there, because if you think about it, it's 5x to the negative first, so that's just 1 over 5x. So you can do it either way. If you can do that shortcut way, then go for it. Okay, now again, here's where it comes in handy to actually write your ones wherever there's not an exponent, because this is 5 to the positive first, and that's x to the negative first. So that 5 is going to stay in the numerator, it's going to stay up top, and then the x to the negative first is going to go down to the bottom. Okay, And again, you don't need to write that 1 there, so let's just take that back off, and we just have 5 over x for this one. Okay, This one here, 3 to the first, and then b to the second, all to the negative second power. So distribute those, that negative 2 to both of those, and that's 3 to the negative second 
b to the negative fourth. And again, since those are both negative, I'm going to move those to the denominator. So that is 1 over 3 squared b to the fourth. And that would be just fine like that. Or you could write it as 1 over 9b to the fourth. Either way. All right. Next to last set of examples, example 40 from page 196, write the following as powers of 2, 3, and or 5. So 8, hopefully you realize, is 2 to the third power. So we can just write that as 1 over 2 to the third, right? Or what they're, they didn't specify well enough, but what they really are looking for to turn this into is move this back up to the top and then switch that positive exponent to a negative exponent. So this is really 2 to the negative third is what we're looking for on that. Okay. 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, so we'll turn this into 1 over 3 squared to the n. So that's 1 over 3 to the 2n. And again, we move that to the top and turn this positive 2n to a negative 2n. So that's 3 to the negative 2n power. Okay? And then on this one here, 25 is just 5 squared. So we write 5 squared over 5 to the 4th, right? So we do 5 to the 2 minus 4 gives us 5 to the negative 2nd, and then we're done. Okay? Last set of examples. You're almost there. Okay. Last set. Example 41 from page 197. Right in non fractional form, so you got to get rid of the fractions. Okay, so that's 3 to the first, x to the first, all of these here. I'm just going to write ones with all of those that don't have them. Okay, so here's what you can do on this. This is the way I've, I've found to be the easiest. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared over x to the first plus 3x to the first over x to the first plus 2 over x to the first. And now I'm going to simplify each one of these. So x squared over x to the first is just 2 minus 1 or just 1. So that's x. These here, the x's are just going to cancel out, right? So you just get plus 3. Okay? And then we get plus 2 over x. Okay? Now, and that's x to the first. And it says to write it in non-fractional form. So this x to the first has got to come back up there. So that's just going to be x plus 3 plus 2. And then that x to the positive first on the bottom comes up the top and turns into x to the negative first. So there's our answer. x plus 3 plus 2x to the negative first. Okay. And then last one, same thing. x cubed over x squared plus 5x to the first over x squared minus 3 over x squared. 3 minus 2 gives us 1. 1 minus 2 gives us negative 1. And then another way to look at this is x to the 0. 0 minus 2, a little bit of a shortcut would be to go 0 minus 2 is 3x to the negative second and then you don't have to move it to the bottom and then move it back to the top all right and that is our final answer for that one okay we're all done finally so you've learned and you should be able to apply all the index laws and again there are seven of those with both constants and with variables and then you're actually also combining those index and power laws together okay so if you have any questions feel free to ask Thanks.